Well, this week we're building fences. Oh, we don't want to be offensive. <laughs> we don't want to be offensive. The, the Department of Defense is building defense. So uh, the switching yard, we were working on the switching yard a year ago, and we got a little bit sidetracked uh. on the, the garden railroads uh, sidetrack and then on the logging railroad sidetrack. Anyway, we're back working on the switching yard, which we were working on exactly one year ago. Oh, has it been a year ago? Wow. Time flies. Anyway, <laughs> um, the, the switching yard is all finished with ballast and everything, and now we need to build the fence. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and so actually, over the next few weeks, we're going to be showing everybody how we built the fence. It's all in, you can see. So now we will recap what we've done. Oh, my. As we built all of this fence from one end of the switching yard to the other. It's mostly a wood fence, but there's a, a few other sections as well. Right. So we're breaking this up into, oh, probably four shows. Right. I'm not sure yet because we haven't made the shows. We, right, we're still going at it. <laughs> but the very first show here is going to be on the basic construction of a wood fence, as most of this is built the exact same way. Um, there's different sections of it that appear differently, but the basic construction is all the same. Now this is section one and uh, the different thing about this section is it faces outward. Right. And I sort of envision a, a really neat forested area over there. And this this fence was put in at a different time. And for some reason, it faces out where the other ones face in. And But it's just for variety. Right. Just for variety. And I really like this section a lot, section one. Section two is really beat up. Yes, as they have a tendency to get. As they have a tendency to get. And it also, it's missing some boards and it's got some broken pieces and it's been patched, but it also has a gate. I wonder where that goes, like no man's land? Or uh, maybe the outhouse? Could be. <laughs> Something for the train crew. Who can say, but there's a gate. Now, the third section has all been patched with corrugated metal. Oh my. Now, in, in hindsight, I decided that I like this so much that I took some of this patching off of here and put it in other places on the fence because it, it doesn't seem to make sense to me. It doesn't seem to make sense to me uh, that there would just be patches in one place. So uh, the, the section two has gotten some of these patches uh, since it's also beat up right. and patched. Now section four is the good section. Right. It looks like it has just recently been built. My my assumption here is that it fell down so completely that some years ago they started over and put up a brand new fence. As you have to do. And if that were modern times, it would be tagged. Uh-huh. But back in uh, the post-war era, it would have been tagged. Tags looked like this. Right. Playbills and political posters and not spray cans, because I'm not sure spray cans had even been invented at the time. No. But this is, this is post-war tagging on a, on a new section of fence. So I thought that would be a fun thing to do, is put up some of these posters on the new fence. Some of them are political. Yes, a little bit, <laughs> yes. <laughs> governor Will Cheatham and the Lieutenant Governor Datsow. Will Cheatham and Datsow. There you go. <laughs> section 5 is a chain-link fence and is uh, really in good shape, pretty modern. Uh, again, this section of fence must have fallen down, but this leads up to the road crossing. Right. And the road crossing, uh, the forest behind there looks so neat, I didn't really want to cover it up. Right. And so I thought, let's do chain link. It would right. be fun to do chain link. So we'll be doing a show on how to do chain link in various scales. And then your section. Right, the barbed wire with cedar post. Just like from down home. Right, exactly. <laughs> So I love the look of this on the far side of the road crossing. And you were saying you want to do like a forced perspective at yes, the road crossing? absolutely. Because this can actually look like it leads off into the distance as the road goes off into the distance. Yeah, I think I can pull it off. But boy, do I love the look of that. It's fun. So we'll be looking at how you make barbed wire and, and how you make this, this type of fence, because that's really neat. And then on the upper railroad, we want to use this at the cattle ranch. Yeah, it's got to keep the bull under control. Now we also will be doing a show on how to stain the wood to make it look old. Right. And uh, how to create these rusted corrugated metal panels for patching the fence. 
But first we need to start by planning out the fence. Right. Because the fence lives between the power poles and there's a fairly uniform distance between each power pole. But the first thing I wanted to do was just test some of these ideas and figure out exactly what would be a good way to build some fence. So these are actually some test pieces. Kind of looks a little bit beat up and irregular. Yeah, I think this would look great for the beat up fence section. Right. Now the different fence sections all live between the power poles that we've already put up. And so the spacing needs to be worked out so that the posts go in at a pretty much uniform spacing between the power poles. So I went through here and measured all that up and did a little quick mathematics and figured out what the exact spacing needs to be for the path, not for the power poles, but for the fence poles. And it actually came out that there's gonna be four different lengths for the top and bottom rails. Now the top and bottom rails and the posts are all built out of strip wood from the hobby shop. Right. And that's like a basswood. Yeah, and something it's, like that. And it's real easy, but it's, it's easy to work with, but it's expensive. Yes. And then when we were thinking of building all these slats, the slats for the, the vertical slats, boy, we need like over a hundred of them. Right. And uh, we found a, uh, this. It's a much more economical solution. Right, at Walmart, no less. <laughs> Walmart, the go sticks, the skinny sticks. Avoid the ones with the rounded ends. Right, get the squared off ends. They're easier to cut. And then we cut everything with a Northwest short line chopper. Right. It just uses a razor blade. You can get these on Northwest Short Lines website. But when you're mass producing a bunch of uniform pieces, uh, boy, is this the easy way to cut them nice, nice and square and make a uh, hundred of the exact same piece over and over and over again for the slats. And of course, we, we were even able to cut the, the square posts on this thing. And they came out just fine. That's fine. I don't know what we'd do without the Northwest short line chopper. Oh, work yourself silly with a little saw. Boy, and then it doesn't turn out as, as well. No. Okay, now here's the basic construction then of the framework. And again, the entire wood fence uses this system. So I've taken one of the posts and then put the top and bottom rails at the proper spacing and square to the fence post. And then all of this is being secured with uh, CA glue, super glue. Right. Uh, simply because I need the quick drying and, and I'm using a kicker on here as well, but uh, I can get everything into alignment and then just zap that with a little bit of this glue. And then I also put the very first slat on to give it strength. And uh, as I worked with this, I started thinking, you know, it probably would have gone better if I'd also put the last slat on. Good idea. Because that would have helped hold everything square. Yep. But as it was, what I did is I just put one slat uh, to hold everything as close to square as I possibly could. And I did find at the far end of some of these that the top and bottom rail had drifted ever so slightly out of square. But I could, I could pull it into square and make that work. Good. So the frameworks all come together like this because they just have one post on one side. But that means at the end of that section, you have to have one with two fence posts to complete the, the section of fence. So one framework for each section has two fence posts and the rest all just have one. Right. Now, notice here I got glue on it. Oh, you did. And I know that's gonna create a problem when I go to stain it. So I, I didn't concern myself too much. I just got that off of there. Yes. I used my, my blade, my scalpel, and a little bit of sandpaper and made sure I got rid of all those little glue spots or it's gonna screw up my staining. It will, big time. And there's, the, there's all the different sections, all stacked up and ready to turn into fence. <laughs> <laughs> So you can see here when I set these two together that that one bottom rail has slipped out of square. And so I had to break that free and reposition it. And that's why I was thinking, you know, had I put the last uh, fence uh, slat in as well, it would have held the whole thing in square and worked a lot better. Right. Anyway, I, I tested it in position and found here's another place where you can see the top rail just slightly out of alignment. And so I broke that free and reset it so that all of my top and bottom rails would line up straight with each other.
Okay, it's now time to put the fence slats on. Oh, look at that. And the, you know, it's like, oh boy, I could drive myself nuts trying to figure out the spacing, but it's easier to just eyeball it. Just set a whole bunch in there and slide them around. So for this, I'm using Yoohoo glue. Oh yeah, that gives you a little wiggle room, if you will. It's got working time, and that's the advantage of the super glue is it dries instantly. The advantage of Yoohoo glue is it doesn't. But it's difficult to work with out of the tube, so I squirted some into one of our little bottles that we get off of Amazon. But then I found it was a little bit of a problem squeezing that out through the little metal tube, so I just ripped the metal tube out of there and drilled <laughs> drilled the hole out a little bit larger. <laughs> Perfect Yoohoo glue applicator because the, the squeezy tubes are hard to work with. They are. So anyway, I just put Yoohoo glue across the top and bottom rail and then positioned my slats on there and then just kind of slid them around until the spacing looked right and then let it dry. So on some of these, the slats are, are practically touching or actually are touching. And then in some of the sections, you can actually see right through the openings between the slats. So I thought it would be fun to really distress the bottom of that fence. Yeah, so I just turned them over to you before I glued them on. Right, and a few wood carving tools and just notch out the bottom of it, here we are. And I thought I'd be clever and use a Dremel, but it didn't work at all. What you did worked perfectly, and that's, that's brilliant, just using your wood carving tools. As long as you don't get your fingers in the way. Yeah, because they're sharp. Yes. <laughs> But doesn't that look amazing? It looks really wonderful. All we need is a rabbit. A rabbit. Actually, and, and some mud and vegetation down there. And so I thought, well, I'm going to come back uh, at the very end here and put a little bit of tufted grass and mud and goo right. down underneath there. Because you can kind of see the space. Exactly. Well. Between the, the railroad and the backdrop. And just fill that in with weeds in. and yeah. mud and goo and maybe a rabbit. A rabbit or two. Yeah. <laughs> So there's section one of the fence with some de-stressed uh, boards. I actually wish we'd done more distressed boards, but they seem to be a lot of work. Right. So section two builds up exactly like section one and the other sections with the same framework, but this one faces inward. Right. And so you can't actually see the framework behind there, except in places where there's a board or two broken off. As it would be in nature, yes. <laughs> As it would be in nature. And this, because I wanted this to feel like a section that's been patched and patched and patched over the years, I cut a lot of the slats to slightly different lengths, and I saved all of the more warped pieces of wood. Right. And put them on a little bit crooked to make this seem like a fence that's seen better days. Right. We could call this the better days uh, section. Now sections uh, three and four build up exactly the same way and these are in better shape. It's the exact same framework and the exact same slats. Again these face inward instead of outward but in this case the the slats are are uniformly cut and more uniformly spaced so that it looks like a fence that's been not recently replaced, but uh, is in much, much better shape than the other section that's really on the verge of falling down. Now, I love sticking a figure in as I'm working on these, just so that I know that I'm getting my scale reference correct. Exactly. And so I like to set the figure over there as I'm working, and I like to take a lot of pictures because the camera betrays every little flaw. Right. And you can be looking at it going, oh, that looks great, and then you take a picture and it doesn't look so great. Anyway, uh, these are the corrugated metal panels, and we'll do a whole show on, well, we've already done a show on how to make these for the roof, roofing sections, but the ones for the fencing sections need to really be corroded, and uh, so there's a different system for really rotting away the bottom of these things. Yes. And, uh, but we'll do a show on revisiting making corrugated steel panels only in this case, really, really, really rotten, right. <laughs> rusted, oh dis dis disintegrated panels. Because they're really fun to, to make. And we use this uh, ferric chloride acid. And the key is to just really use a lot of the acid on there and, and really dissolve a lot of the metal. And then actually our next show is going to be on staining and weathering this wood. And uh, several friends suggested using rusty nail water. 
That just looks gross. It, it, well, I can <laughs> smell it from here. <laughs> it's, a, it's a concoction, and we kind of worked up our own system here of using uh, vinegar and vegetable oil and salt and rusty metal. And boy, does that create a wonderful weathered look for the fence. It really does. So that'll be next week's show is, is, is how we mixed up rusty nail water uh, using a slightly modified formula and then uh, your show on uh, how you make your barbed wire. Yes, I laid awake all night on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the barbed wire, all of these fences have barbed wire across the top, which is why I made the poles extra tall, is so that we could string barbed wire across the top of the entire fence. But we weren't sure how we were going to do that, but you came up with a system. I did. So uh, we'll, go, we'll do a whole show on how you make barbed wire and then on how you make that great looking uh, cedar post field fence. Yes, it's, it's so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's time consuming. Yeah, it but, is. But once you know the trick, it's actually uh, not difficult. It's just time consuming. It is. All of this is, but it's well worth it. But it looks so good. I, I want to make a lot more of this field fencing. That, right. that just looks so brilliant. So anyway, that's what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks. Right. Is building fences. Right. The Department of Defense is right. building defense. And uh, you certainly wouldn't want to miss any of these wonderful shows. So if you're not a subscriber, you want to make sure that you're a subscriber and then turn on your notification bell so that you will be notified. And the easy way to do that is with the blue button. Right there. Yes. <laughs> Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you on Tuesday as we continue working on our Connie locomotive. Right. And see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. See ya. Bye.